Welcome to the Worst Garage, home of the Worst Bus. Today I am going to finally crack into the E46. Gonna get it on, out front of the cover, do a little maintenance, a little off-season maintenance. It's almost race season, kind of sneaking up. Haven't done anything to the car in a number of months. Hasn't been on track in a number of months. I think October was the last time it was on track. We're in February right now, and race season is sneaking up. So got some bus projects I'll probably hit on here in a little bit. Uh, we'll go through some of that stuff, make changing a couple things in there. But ultimately, want to get this thing ready to go to the track. Fortunately, they're pretty basic and don't have a lot of needs. So hopefully it's just fluids and pads and a couple things. Always check your data items. I'm not sure when my nets expire, so I'm gonna find that out. Gonna move these things around a little bit. Picked up this E36 from a buddy just down the street. No clue what I'm gonna do with this thing yet, but it was too good of a deal to pass up, so that has landed in the garage. Going to move this baby, try to jockey, try to jockey the E46 around a little bit and get cracking on it. Sounding a little bit ticky. Not a great start. Don't love that. Seems a little bit tickier than I want. Could be a collapse lifter. Could be a valve that's slightly bent. I don't think so. I'll look back at the data and make sure, but I'm pretty conscious of any possible potential overheads or anything. Nothing that I can recall, but having data is to understanding if there was an issue or not. I don't think I needed that. But for now, I'm going to shut this baby off. All right, a little bit ticky. Like I said, not a great start. I also said that these things really just need some basic needs. Pads, fluids. Looks like we are going to be diving in a little bit more potentially. So what I'm going to do, Check for some exhaust leaks. Also check to make sure it had plenty of oil. I am going to pull the valve cover and take a peek and see if any of the lifters have collapsed. That is my next test because it sounds kind of aggressive like the lifter collapsed. Kind of sounds like it's in the two, maybe three cylinder range, sort of in the middle. We'll dig in and see. That pop of getting coils out is kind of satisfying. Valve covers off. Now I gotta find my feeler vintages. All right, come on down. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So my plan is to take a feeler gauge behind a cam lobe. Cam lobe while it is not compressing it and see if I can squeeze it down in there. And I can compress that pretty easily already. That already seems like possibly a problem. Yeah, versus this one, it takes a lot of force to get in there. Yeah, this lifter is collapsed. Hear that? Collapsed. All right, I'm gonna keep running through that test. Fortunately, I have a bit of a cheat code with Femoral just up the street. So I get to hopefully, well, I won't count my chickens before I hatch. Um, but hopefully we have these in stock, on the shelf, ready to go, which means I can go up there in the morning, I can get this thing set, go up there in the morning, grab what I need, come back, put this baby together, maybe still be able to make the event that I'm hoping to possibly make here very soon. 
All right, seems like pretty much all of the exhaust ones are somewhat bad. So, we're gonna replace all of the exhaust ones. So I slapped it back together, put the valve cover back on, coils, whatever, make it runnable again. I'm gonna try to build some heat in it, build some pressure in it, get the oil warm, see if the lifters will build some pressure. Six bad lifters seems like almost a fluke. So I wanna see if they build up just some carbon sitting for a while. We'll see. something else more serious inside of the engine. Fortunately, it was just the lifters that needed to get pumped up. So that feels good that that was a peace of mind thing. Just go ahead and pop the valve cover, check that, make sure it wasn't anything more serious. Get started working on this baby. First thing I'm gonna do, check the ball joints, check the brakes, go from there. Checking wheel bearings and ball joints. Everything feels good except for the left rear, which doesn't feel like it's a wheel bearing because it's got no play this way. The play this way is typically indicative of either the upper or lower outer ball joint, so that may need a replacement. Uh, so I'll look into that a little bit further. All right, so the lower outer does have a little bit of play. So that will need to be on the list to get replaced. All right, let's zip these wheels off and take next steps. I replaced pads before the last event and they look good. The front rotors are probably good for another day or two. Questionable, debating if I'm gonna go ahead and replace them or not. They got some heat checking. Wow through the camera, they look pretty good. Like that. Right there. Just a little bit weary of. I'm gonna start taking the passenger seat out, get the harness out, since I don't need that for racing. Got my right, not right, left side met here. Check the date on this bad boy. December 2024, so this thing's still good through the end of the year. I'm gonna put that back in, had that out because we were doing the DE last time. I need to prop this door open. And the universal floor mounts. All right. That's passenger seat. Passenger seat mounts, harnesses, all the stuff out on this side. Now, you can get the driver's side seat out because it's in a position where it fits both me and Carrie and got sliders on it. I'm gonna go ahead, since she's not gonna be driving at this next event, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out and get it back into the location for me. I have learned that uh, I need to mark the locations because I don't remember exactly where everything goes when it's me getting in the car and positioning it for myself. So, 
hopefully pretty simple for me to just plop it out, plop it back in. Sometimes seat fitting can be a little bit of a pain and take some time, but once you get it dialed in, not so bad, especially if you mark the spots that you need to, to have it in if you're still in that replacement. So I'm gonna pop over to that side, get that knocked out. Check my hardest dates. Not valid after 2026, so still good there. Seat, 2026, still good there. Now I have to disassemble these, get the side mounts off of this so that I can then reattach them, get this thing fixed mounted, which is really the safer option. Sometimes sliders are just a necessary thing that has to be done if multiple people are sharing the car. But since this next event is going to be only me in the car, I'm going to go ahead and fix mount the seat to my specific seat position. All right, I also need to change the belt lengths. I changed them a little bit to accommodate multiple drivers. Now I'm going to put them back. I also marked on the belts. Uh, and you can also see marks of where the belts have been previously. So I'm going to change those back to my position as well. I marked on here, and you can see the kind of crease mark there of where I'm going to adjust the shoulders to. You can also see my markings here for where I have the uh, for where I have the side mounts. So you'll see that'll go there, and then because these are also slotted, I marked on there of how far in or out these go, just to make life easy for me when I need to swap it back. this thing down, see if that's what I want. Yes, I'm going to touch it. I'm going to get this camera back in place. I'll see how it's close. Good on the sun strap and the lap belts. The lap belts are grabbing right, hooking into that pelvis like they're supposed to. Um, need to shorten the shoulder straps a little bit. They're right on the edge of where they should be. And if I had a Hans on them, this is where they were, I would leave them. But because I know once I put a Hans on, it's gonna be even shorter and tighter. They're gonna be right on the edge. So I need to shorten up, or sorry, lengthen up the shoulders just a, a touch and they're a little bit uneven, probably three inches on the left side and two inches on the right side. All right, yeah, that's where it is. Love these lifetime harnesses, by the way. Super easy to adjust, super easy to tighten down. All right, what's next? I need to bungee the lap belt and the sub belt and then I always make sure that I hang these over. Sometimes we'll do a magnet in these and you can put them up against the roll bar or something. Um, but the bungees, uh, just surgical tubing around this to a spot in the car means I'm not fumbling with my harnesses when I get in and out. Not as crucial when sprint racing, but when endurance racing or doing any driver changes, it's super nice to know that when you undo the belt, the cam lock, it's just going to fling open and be ready for the next driver to get in and not have to worry about positioning and everything. So uh, also got to get the center net hooked up. So I'll work on bungees and center net. Fitting a center net is kind of a pain in the butt. So whenever I go through this, I don't actually undo all of the center net. I know where my seat's going to be and I know where the center net needs to be. So I leave everything, you know, where it is. So it's fitted for the car already for me and I don't have to fumble with it because it really is kind of a pain. Um, got the buckle zip tied up back here. Bring that through. Bring this through. 
And you see all that? I gotta somehow make that marry together. Goodness. There it is. The lower strap was was down, which wasn't letting it get where it needed to be. An often overlooked thing is the positioning of this internet. You know, a lot of people just throw a center net in and just kind of expect it to, well, it's a center net, I've got it in the car. And okay, you met the rules requirement, but it needs to be super tight. I'll watch videos of cars where it's just kind of floating around and not really gonna do much when you get in a side impact. You know, the point of this thing is to catch your body as you kind of squish into the harnesses, the harnesses stretch if you get in a big impact and you're gonna go forward around these head restraints and this is to catch you so that helps limit bodily injuries. And if you have it down here, not gonna catch your body very well. If you have it way out here, sometimes I see them going to a post like all the way on the passenger side, that's not where it's supposed to be. It needs to go to the center, tight to the, tight to the seat, tight to your body if it can be. You know, wrap it around the seat and needs to be kind of around that almost eye level. Now, this is tough. I've got to get this in here and I'm going to figure it out. I typically use a pair of channel locks to get everything scrunched up, but it's a little bit of a battle. And before I go fighting with this thing too hard, probably a good idea to make sure my net is also still in bait. Not valid after 2025, so effectively have two more years. All right. A little bit of a pain in the butt, but see how tight that is? You know, it's going to actually hold me if I end up in a situation where I want it to hold me. So, important safety measure. Also, another thing you got to make sure of is when you put it on the ribs that are stitched this way, you need to be facing away from the driver. You need the smooth side of the long, the long ways on the driver side, because what can happen is your helmet can catch on these and that could be another bad situation. So, all right, center net on, starting to do the bungees. Also need to put the window net on. I'm gonna do window net next, that's easy. Um. Perfect. The nylon strapping, holding the bottom bar in, the tab back here with the pin, welded tab up there, that's spring loaded. We we'll paint this red just for more visibility in case a corner worker or someone needs to get it. You see, that pops out. Got my zip ties, got my surgical tubing, nice and elastic, works amazing for this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap around the loop handle here and just then also wrap it around the uh, roll cage at a certain spot and then just wrap it around and zip tie it together. And that'll be the ticket. You don't want it to pull an insane amount on it, just, just enough to when you when I undo the buckle, it's gonna to wanna to flop back that way. Just a little bit of tension, just so that it comes back this way. All right, feels good. Doesn't feel like it's too much tension, anything like that. So I think we're in business. You can see, just pulled, as soon as I undid the cam lock, just pulled it right to the side. Substrap went forward, this one to the side. Now I'm not fumbling under my seat in grid or anywhere trying to get my belts hooked up. They are where they are. And right now, I don't have my shoulders over the top. But normally, whenever I'm undoing my belts, take my belts, put them over the heavy strength portion of the seat. I'll give you a little better view of what I just did. And then similar deal on the other side. Next thing I want to hit is the date of the fire bottle. Make sure I'm in date, all good. Always want to try to install the fire bottle with the date of next service visible if you can. This one is 
and the date of next service shows three of 25. So still good for this year. Then another thing I wanna check are the fire poles. You wanna make sure that these are good and, and pull nice and smoothly. You wanna undo the cables from this side of the fire bottle and then just kind of pull them back and forth a little bit and make sure there's no stiction, that they operate smoothly because if you ever need to use your fire system, hopefully you don't, you wanna make sure that those poles activate smoothly, pull smoothly and are there when you need it. Make sure they're taut once you're done. Awesome. I think I'm mostly done on the inside now. Got one. New Mila ball joint. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Let's try something different. I got a ball joint tool. All right, we're getting somewhere. Slowly but surely. There she blows. All right. Now, a reverse. Make sure everything's clean in here. See you in there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put together this back end again. All right, clean up my mess in this area and move on to whatever the next thing is on my list. Something I did not do last night during the whole lifter extravaganza was put the cover back on here. Not just a beauty cover, it really helps protect from rain getting in, any moisture dropping down most notably into cylinder four, maybe five, comes down through there into the spark plug hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss those covers back on. Some critical pieces I forgot to put in last night were these. You gotta have these, make everything look good. Ooh, baby. Made the decision to go ahead and change the front brake rotors. They honestly look like they're okay. They'll get me through at least a day, maybe two, but I'm not sure they would also get me through Sunday. And to be honest, I don't like working on my car at the track. I like to have a car that's prepped, ready to go right off the trailer. And then also one that I don't have to mess with over the weekend, except for maybe some minor tuning changes, shock changes, whatever for that, just based on track conditions and whatnot. Um, so pulled out some Mila PD rotors out of the spares bin. Need to make sure I put those on a list to replenish my spares. Same with that rear outer ball joint that I had to replace last night. And uh, also once we get this done, we'll go ahead and get the brake fluid flushed with some Redline RL600 fluid and let's get at it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move to bleeding the brakes. I was gonna do the rotors first, but ended up having a little helper come on down here to give me some assistance. Was gonna use a pressure bleeder, but instead gonna do it the way that I ultimately prefer, which is having someone in the driver's seat doing the old press release, press release. Yay. So here is Miss Carrie Wurz to offer me some assistance while I refresh the Redline RL600 brake fluid. Brakes are bled. One important note is to you never want to let your reservoir get low or empty when you are bleeding the brakes. However, you also don't want to overfill it. So I've actually got it under the max mark right about there because as the fluid heats up, expands, it can come over the top of the cap and then get on some sensors that are down there, cause some issues. So 
Just make sure that you don't overfill it, but also make sure you don't let it run dry. And now I'll put my helper to work again to help get me a new windshield banner put on this thing because that one is a bit damaged. And then we're gonna see if we can clean up the tear off a little bit as well. Got one side done, working on the passenger side now. Wanted to show a piece that's fairly important to making sure everything seats properly. And that's to get a wire brush in here and just kind of clean up this surface to make sure everything mates properly, no debris making the rotor sit unevenly. And then also to make sure that the pads slide smoothly on this, get in here and wire brush in here so that this is clear of all debris, just to reduce any pad binding. You want your pads to operate as free as possible. At the heart of keeping a race car running properly are the fluids. So need to go ahead and hit a full fluid flush on all these things. Just finished up the brake fluid while Carrie was down here to give me an assist. But now I need to hit the engine trans diff and got Redline 40 weight race for the engine, Redline D4 ATF for the trans, and then Redline 75 110 for the diff. Fluids complete, brake fluid, engine, trans, diff, power steering's all good. And I went ahead and did a spot check as well as torqued a few things down just to make sure everything was all good through my nut and bolt sheet, checked various connections, lines, all the things. And fortunately, nothing alarming, everything is all good. So my next step is I'm going to go ahead and throw some wheels and tires on this thing, get it back on the ground, do a quick spot check alignment with some toe plates. Not gonna go through a full scale corner balance setup but do just want to check and make sure I'm still within the window that I was in previously. So let's get on the ground. Everything's torqued and pressured, which means we're at the right ride height, which means that everything should be set where it approximately should be. Not sure how level this garage floor is, even though it's a fairly fresh pad, but I'm going to go ahead and do this toe plate check. All right. Good there, which is good news. Don't mess with this thing. Not gonna tell you where it is though. All right, we're good back here as well, which is fantastic news. That means I don't need to do a whole lot to this thing, setup-wise, and the setup that I had on this thing at the end of last year was working fairly well, so I'm gonna leave that as is. I'm gonna go ahead and count my shot clicks as well, just to make sure I know where those are, even though I do have those in my notes, just so that I know where my baseline is going into the weekend. Speaking of going over the weekend, looks like I'm going to be able to go to Carolina Motor Sports Park this weekend. I've never been to that track, so I'm really looking forward to go trying out a new track and get the year started off racing with some Spec U46 buddies, hang out with some friends, and uh, hopefully come home with some good results. So stay tuned. Going to dive into the weekend a little bit, document some of that stuff, and hopefully have some fun. You ready to go? Should be an awesome race weekend. We are ready to kill it this year. It's gonna be a wild ride.